Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Follow Your Heart Zen Tangle class for the San Rafael Public Library. I'm so excited to bring you this class. Let's go ahead and talk about the things that we are going to need for our class today. We're going to be working with a Micron PN pen, a white gel pen, graphite pencil and a tortillon or a blending stump. If you don't have one of these, a little q-tip will work in a pinch. I'm going to be working with the Genesis tile at tangledyogi.com. If you want to check these out, they're really smooth papers that are really wonderful for working with color. If you don't have one of these, go ahead and grab your sketch pad or your favorite cardstock and make a tile that's four and a half by four and a half inches and you're good to go. Okay, well let's get started with Follow Your Heart. So before we get started with class, I'd like for us to take a moment to get grounded and centered and do some breathing. So go ahead and take a comfortable seated position in your chair. Allow your feet to touch down onto the floor, letting your hands rest in your lap. And if you're all right with it, allowing your eyes to close for a moment. And just letting yourself land in your space as you soften in your shoulders and your arms, your chest and your rib cage and belly. Letting go through the hips and the thighs, the knees and the calves, the ankles and the feet. Allowing your entire body to be at ease in this moment. And letting your awareness come to your breath. Feeling the breath as it rolls in. And feeling the breath as it leaves the body. As you inhale, feeling your body expand with breath. And as you exhale, feel the body release. And just following your breath for the next few moments in this space. And as we breathe in this space, I'm going to share a quote from the poet Rumi. And he says, your heart knows the way, run in that direction. I'm just letting that simmer with you for a moment as you breathe in. And as you breathe out. And one more time. Big deep breath here. And let it go with a sigh. And then beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and your toes. And then allowing the eyes to gently blink open as we begin our Zentangle practice today. Okay, so we are going to get started here. I've got my graphite pencil in my hand, and I'm going to start the regular old-fashioned Zentangle way by putting my dots into the corners here, and then I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots. Now I like to take my time, so you're just going to see me start to connect. and just turning here, making it easy for my hands. And last one right here. Now, for this particular piece, we're going to be using a really nice string that divides the space here. So you're going to see me come up to the top, and I'm just going to make a little dot right in the midpoint. And I'm just going to let that dot drop down, and I'm going to do my very best to stay in the middle. And then I'm going to turn my piece on its side and I'm going to do it again. So you can see now that I've got four squares to divide the space. I'm going to go down from the diagonal 
and just let that cut across. Still using my graphite pencil here. And there you have it. So that is going to be our beginning of our string here. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish mine and then when we come back we're going to build a little bit more to the string. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by building a box in the center of my piece here. So I'm just going to come up and out here about, I'm going to say, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to start by making a line right here. And then I'm going to let this drop down and let this drop down and then I'm going to cut across and make my box. Now you can see my box is a little wonky. That's just fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So once I have my box, I'm going to come away from the box just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, I think. And I'm going to start to make these diagonal lines. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to have to lift up and come out the other side. Okay, let's zero in on this so that you can really see it. So you can see that this line started right here and it jumped and came over here. I'm going to turn my tile clockwise here and I'm going to go again. So I'm going to come down and out the other side. Turning my tile, coming down and out the other side. And then one more time, coming down and out the other side. Now you can see mine's a little wonky, and if you need to fix yours, you can always come in and fix it. This one is a little bit low for me, so I'm just going to make it a little bit higher, and maybe this one might need to come out just a little bit. But otherwise, I think we're in pretty good standing here. So I'm going to let go of my pen or my pencil here, and I'm going to pick up my Micron P and Pen. So you can see that I've got my Micron P and Pen here, and I am just going to outline the outside of this piece here. So you're going to see me come in, and I'm just going to do the outside. So just working on those outside pieces. I'm going to turn my tile to make it work for my hand here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and get those other pieces right in here. So I'm just completely disregarding the, the inside of my piece so that now I've got this really pretty star-like shape. I'm going to go to the outside and I'm going to do an aura. Now you're going to see me kind of round over these areas. See how I'm not coming in with a hard tip on it? I'm actually rounding off my tip a little bit. Oops, I missed this one. I'll just get that. And there you have the star right in the center of your piece, which really works out quite nicely. So go ahead and finish up yours, and then when we come back, we're going to start to build. So I'm just going to pick up my little kneaded eraser here, and I'm going to erase the inside. And you can see already that star is looking really great. I'm enjoying the way that that looks. And so we're going to start by building off of this a little bit more. Now I'm going to pick up my little pencil here that I had and right in the middle of every valley that I have I'm going to let a little line come out. So you're going to see me just divide the space with every valley. So you can see that I'm dividing up the middle of the space through the valley here. So this is just another part of our 
thing, our string here. So you can see that it divides these little channels that we have in a really nice way. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so that you can see. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my pen and I'm going to start to build a heart. So I'm going to use this uh, little line as a place to find center and then I'm going to come up, touch the edge, and make my heart. You're going to come up, touch the edge, and make your heart. Now once I have my heart, I'm going to come into the center and put a little bit of a spiral in it, just like so. So let's go to the next one and do the same. So I'm going to start by letting the heart jump up and touch. And you can see that I'm going to come up and let it touch. And I'm trying to make my hearts about the same size. And then I'll put my little swirl in there. Coming in, start by touching the edge. Coming up, touch the edge. And then once again, nice swirl right there. Coming in, making my heart, putting in the swirl, and turning. Coming in, touch the edge, make your swirl, and go to the next. And you can see why it's so nice to have that little line right in the center to help you center your heart. Coming up, touching the edge, making your swirl, and one more time. And there you can see we've already got this really nice heart flower right in the center. Now I'm going to come in right underneath where the heart is under the star and I'm going to put in a tipple right into the center. A tipple is just a circle. Normally tipple comes in clusters but we're just going to put one small tipple into the center here. And if you don't have room for it you can puddle in that area. So don't worry about it. You don't have to do it the same way that I'm doing it. If you had an oops opportunity, follow that, that little oops opportunity. It might have something really neat for you. So there you can see I have those nice tipple in there. And now I can go in and I can puddle around them. So you go ahead and do yours, I'm going to do mine, and then when we come back, we're going to add. So this center star that we're using is actually from the Valentangle Challenge that just finished up with Marguerite Sama. She's one of my favorite people to follow for uh, tangling, and I believe her website is called happytangling.com. You should definitely check her out. But she brought us that beautiful star that's in the center here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add on to this and you're going to see me go from the points of the two hearts out to the edge here and I'm going to make a triangle that's just going to go ahead and connect those two. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to come to the next set. So I'm skipping the diagonal and just doing where the horizontals are. So I'm just coming through And then one more time. Just like so. And isn't that a beautiful shape? So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to add in a tangle into that. So we are going to do a variation on a tangle called well. And well, for those of you who have been with me before, you know that I like this tangle quite a bit. The tangle of well, and let's just go ahead and do it in a uh, triangle here. 
It's kind of a wonky triangle, but it will work nonetheless. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. We're going to go ahead and just make a circle right in the center, and then we're going to drop down and touch the left side of the circle. I'm going to turn my tile, and I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to turn my tile and do it one more time. Now that is normally how well is done and sometimes people will put in extra lines and whatnot. But for this particular case, because we are following our hearts today, we're going to put a heart in our well. So it's going to look like this. We're going to come in and create a heart that is going to move through the piece. So I'm going to come and I'm going to turn and make another one. And I'm going to turn and make another one. And so this is a really nice tangulation that was done in Valentangled this month and it was just so fun. Now if you wanted to put some echo lines behind this, you could put some echo lines to make it interesting just by auraing and sending maybe love out into the world because the world could use more love. So you can see that I'm just letting that or out. And what I love about well is well is really fun to shade. And so uh, if you want to do auras on yours, you can and then we'll shade it out, which will make it really fun. But isn't that such a pretty little tangulation? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up into these triangles that we've made up here. And if you want to, you can come in with your kneaded eraser and just erase out any pencil lines that are in your triangles because those are just your strings that you're letting go of. And if you want to get them out of your little hearts that you did too, you can do that as well. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start by making the circle. And then I'm going to drop in and connect. Drop in from this corner right over here. And then at the bottom, I'm going to come in from the tip of the heart or the tip of the star. And then I'll go again from this corner. So every time I'm landing on the left side of the inner circle here. So let's go ahead and do the next one. So you're going to see me just turn clockwise. I'm going to drop the little circle into the center, landing on the left side of the circle, turning my tile counterclockwise here, coming in and landing on the left, going counterclockwise again, coming in and landing on the left, turning counterclockwise again, and landing on the left. And then I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to do the same. So I'm just coming in, making my circle, landing on the left, dropping in, landing on the left, coming in from the tip of the star, landing, one more time, and landing. Already this is starting to look really cool. So let's go ahead and get right in there dropping in, turning, dropping on the left, turning, dropping on the left, and last time, dropping on the left. So when I zoom out, you can see how neat that is. Isn't that really pretty? Now I'm going to go into the center of each of these wells and give this a little bit of a half moon in here and then I'm going to puddle in that half moon just to give it a little bit of spark. So just making a little half moon and puddling it in. Little half moon, puddle it in. And last time. Now, I'm going to come back up to well here, and if you need to pause me at any time, this is a good place to do it. So I'm just going to come into that well that's up here, and we're going to start to add the hearts. So I'm just going to come in and add a heart. I'm going to turn, add a heart, 
turn, add a heart, and last time. And you can see that that looks really cool. Now for this particular one, I'm not going to do the auras on it, but what I am going to do is I am going to do a little line with a dot just to make it interesting. So I'm going to go to the next one and do the same. So here's my next one. I'm just going to come in right above this little um, V and make my two arches. There's my first heart turning my tile. Here's another heart. Turning my tile. Here's another. One more for good luck. Making my lines so that when I come back to center and I zoom out, that has a really cool feel inside of those pieces. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to start in with a new tangle. Okay, so since we just did all of those hearts, I thought I'd share a quote with you. The author is unknown, but it's one of my favorite quotes and it goes like this. It's impossible, said pride. It's risky, said experience. It's pointless, said reason. Give it a try whispered the heart. So sometimes fear can stop us from doing the things that our heart really desires. And so I hope that you are overcoming fears today and creating something really special. So this next tangle that we're going to be working on is from the uh, the Valentangle challenge again, which I really loved. And this one actually wasn't a tangle that was in the challenge, but she offered it anyway. And she's calling it the envelope flower. And I just loved this. I thought this was so gorgeous. And so what it's going to look like is, and I'm just going to do a variation of it. It is an elongated flux. And then you're going to put a little U on the top of it. And then once you have that, you're going to come off to the edge and create a petal like shape that's going to come over and another petal like shape that's going to come over. Now I added an extra one because I thought it looked a little more interesting to me. And then she puts a little heart in the center. And so that is called envelope flower and she, she layered them which was really lovely but we're going to do a little something more art deco with them. So we're going to take this off to the side and we're going to come up into the corners here. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to start in right in here. Now if you want you can use this line as a guide or you can get uh, your eraser out if you want to but I'm going to use mine as a guide. So I'm going to come about to the halfway point here so you're going to see me come up and do a very narrow flux. Flux is just an elongated teardrop shape and then I'm going to put a U on it. And then you're going to see me start to build my petals. Now here I'm going to break my border a little bit. That's why I never pen in my borders until I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and bring in another one right out here. And then once again putting the heart into the center. Now if you want you could do a nice aura inside of your petals to make it look really interesting. I'm going to come over here and just bring that aura around. And I think that looks really nice. Now I'm going to bring a couple of smaller ones down at the bottom. So you're going to see me come up and make my flex shape. I'm going to put a little U on it create my petals. These I'm just going to leave with two petals. And if you want to come in and make an aura, you can. And I think this has a really neat Art Deco feel to it. I'm going to come over to the other side, 
make a nice arc, put a little U on it, and then here come the petals. So just two on the smaller ones, and then here comes the heart. And I think that has a really unique feel to it, don't you? So let's go ahead and do another one. So I'm just going to go to the next section, coming up to the halfway point, nice elongated flux, put a U on it, making now our petals. You can see I'm going to break the border again. I'll come over here and add an extra petal. And going ahead and auraing on the inside. Take your time. And letting the heart drop in. Let's come over here and do another. Create the U. Use your petals. Go ahead and make an aura. And make a heart. And over to the opposite side. Here we go. Coming up and over. Make a U. Petal. And another petal. and a heart. Super fun, super easy. Let's go ahead and finish these two on your own and then when we come back we're going to add in just a little bit more to the piece. Okay, so we're going to drop into the center of this piece here and we're going to put in a butterfly. Now if you don't want to put in a butterfly you don't have to but I'm going to use this opportunity to put something that is symbolic for me. I, I love the symbol of the butterfly. So what I'm going to do is I just have this little line that's going right across here and I'm going to come in right at the midsection here and a little bit above and make his head and then I'm going to come in and you can notice that I'm, I picked up my graphite pencil. I'm going to do a little teardrop shape that's very narrow. Now once I have that, I'm going to do another teardrop shape that's going to come up and over and touch and come back in. And I'll do another one that will come up and over and touch and come back in. Now once I have that, I'm going to come right to where the edge of each of those teardrops are. And you can see that mine is a little off, so I'm going to let this become a little bit bigger here since I'm working with graphite. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit more so that you can see what I'm up to. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to make a little arc that's going to connect to the body. And then we'll do another one right here that's going to connect to the body. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start to ink it in. So nice and small and then a nice narrow teardrop shape and then I'm going to come over to the side and make this kind of triangular, kind of rounded triangular shape and the same thing over here. And then I'll come in and I'll create these pieces that will come back in to the center. I'm going to go ahead and blacken in his little head and blacken in his little body. So go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to add some detail. 
So I'm going to come in and start to add some detailing into this piece here. I'm just going to make another flux-like shape that's going to come up like so, nice and narrow. And then I'm going to do another one down low. I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite side here. So nice, narrow flux and another flux right there. Now I'm going to come in from the top and I'm going to add another flux or another rounded arc shape. And I'll do the same thing over here. And then I'll do another one right on top of that that's a little shorter. And I'll do another one over here that's a little bit shorter. Now for the pieces below, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a flux-like shape that doesn't go all the way to the edge. And this one over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these lines that are emanating from that flux shape. Now in the upper wing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to puddle around those shapes. Now if you don't have a white pen, you can always just make some little circles and puddle around those to bring in a little bit of detail into the piece. I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same, so I'll just bring in some little circles. Now if you have a white pen, you can come in later and just use your white pen. And I'll come over to the other side. Well, that looks pretty darn good to me. I'm liking this. So I'm going to give this a little bit of heaviness right in here just to make it interesting. And a little bit of heaviness right over here. Now I'm going to give him some antennae here and that's just going to be one and two. Okay, so go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back it's time for color. Okay, so before we actually do color, we're going to add in our border here. And I'm going to come in and start to ink in my border. Let's start in the corner here. And we're going to use the holly bob method where we pick up and come out the other side. So we're not intersecting the tangle, but we are uh, bringing in this border to make it look as if the tangles, the patterns themselves, are breaking the border. So you can see that when I get close to one of these flowers, I pick up my pen and I bring it out the other side. And then the Zentangle method, we call it the Hollybaugh method because it was created by Molly Hollybaugh. So I'm just going to move through here. and come around the other side. Picking up and putting down. I'm finally getting all the way around. And I love this because it really anchors the piece and brings it into just a really fun containment here. So go ahead and finish up yours and then when we come back we are going to do some color. 
Okay, so I'm going to pick up my kneaded eraser and see if there are any pencil spots that I need to erase out from my string that we created here. These are our guidelines that we're just getting rid of that we don't need anymore so that when we go ahead with our color it's not impeded by anything. All right, so the first color that I'm going to pick up is a really nice cadmium orange. This is PC118. And then I'm also going to be picking up a really nice yellow. And I'm using the yellow to kind of spark off of the cadmium orange. So the yellow that I'm going to be using is the yellowed orange. And this is PC1002. And then finally, I want to have just a little spark of red in here. So I'm going to bring in the crimson red, and that is PC924, uh, or rather PC974. No, PC924. Sorry about that. So we're going to be using these, and remember, if you don't have the same colors as me, don't worry about it. What I'm looking for is a warm yellow, an orange, and a red. Okay, that's really what we're going for here. So don't get too far into your head about it because really we're just going to be using this as a, as a hue. Okay, and you'll want to make sure that your colors are all sharpened up because that's also going to really help. So I'm going to start with the yellow first and I'm going to start by coming into the butterfly. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that butterfly here. I'm going to dust the butterfly in with just the yellow. Now you'll notice that those dots that we had, I'm not going to touch those. I'm going to let those stay. And I'll be coming in to the bottom half of the butterfly as well. And I'm going fairly lightly with this. I don't want to saturate it too much. I'm just doing a foundational color. Now once I have that, I'm going to come into where the, uh, the, the pieces are joining together with the butterfly and just start to dust in with that orange. So you can see that I've changed my, uh, my color pencil and I'm coming in with the orange. And then I'll dust down a little bit into the bottom wings, but not too much. I'm just creating a little bit of a shadow underneath. Now once I have that, I'm going to pick back up the yellow and I'm going to start to blur the line of demarcation here. Little circles running right over the top of where that orange meets the light yellow. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can see that that really does soften it up and really gives it a soft hue. Same thing down in here, just a really soft blur of color. And then just for a pop, we're going to bring in that crimson red. And I'm just going to dust that inner area right in here just to give it that zing that I'm looking for. Getting right in there. And if you feel the need to blur that out a little bit, you can always pick up that yellow and just lightly blur it out. The reason why I'm using the yellow is because the yellow has more wax in it, so it pulls the color around a little bit. It's a really nice, nice way to work with the color. So go ahead and do your butterfly, and then when we come back, we're going to work with our hearts. So I'm going to pick back up that yellow here and I'm going to start to work inside of my heart. And I want to really give this heart the feeling of almost like a gemstone here or have a sunburst in it. So I'm coming in with that, that really nice yellow here, the yellowed orange. And you can see that I'm filling the heart with that color. Now I will say that I'm going very lightly because I'm just creating a foundation of color. 
Now once I have that, I'm going to pick up the orange and from the tip of my heart, I'm going to add in a little bit of that orange. You can see I'm going fairly lightly again. I'm just hinting at that sunburst. I'm not uh, making it overt, you know. And then finally I'll come in and I will do a little bit of that crimson right at the tip. I'm going to pick up that yellow again and I'm going to blur out the area of demarcation. Little circles where the orange is meeting the light yellow. And then you can see that I'm starting to run down the orange and get right into that red and pull it up a little bit, giving it a little tease. And you can see that that brings such a nice blur of color in there. Now if you're like me and you love to see a really nice blend, I'm going to pick up my white pencil. This is PC938 and I'm going to start to just use that white and let it just kind of get softened up. You can see that I'm doing little circles and look at what that's doing to the color. It's taking any grain, grain or granulation that's in there and it's kind of smoothing it out. So you can see that here there's a little bit of granulation whereas over here it's softening. So you can see that that's really getting in there and I'm using a light to medium pressure with that. So that's what I'm going to do with the hearts. And you can go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. Now just a tip for you as you're working, I tend to work with one color at a time. So I'll go all the way around the mandala here and do the light yellow and then I'll come back and do the orange and then I'll come back and do the red and then I'll come back and blend. It just makes it so that you can flow a little bit more easily. So go ahead and allow yourself to to have that kind of Zen moment. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. So we're going to continue to use these colors here. I'm going to come into well and bring some of that yellow, red, and orange into those smaller hearts that are up at the top here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. And I'm going to just start by dusting in those hearts. And then you're going to see me come in and do a little bit of the orange right to the halfway point. I'm going to blur those out a little bit. And then a little pop of red right at the tip there, right where they emerge from the center. And you can see that that brings a really nice feel to it. If you want to pick up your white and soften it up a little bit, you're welcome to do so. That just gives it a little bit more softening, a little bit more blend, which is kind of cool. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to do that to each and every one of my wells, okay? All right, I'll see you soon. Remember to relax. Enjoy. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. And remember, this is for fun. So really let that inner critic take the back seat. So I'm just loving this. I, you know, even if we left it just like that, it would be really cool. So I'm going to come up into the hearts that are in our envelope flowers here. So these guys right up in here. And I'm just going to come in and start to dust them down with a little bit of that yellow, just like what we just did in the hearts in the center. And I'm going to come back in and do the same treatment. So a little bit of orange right in at the point of origin there. And then I'll come back in and soften it up a little bit. Let's make that a little bit bigger so that you can see it. 
and then I'm going to pick up some of that crimson and just dust it in just for a little bit of pop. And you can see how that really brings your eye right into it. One of the things that I love about carrying color is that it's taking your eye from the center, moving it outward and outward again. So go ahead and do all of your external hearts there. And then when we come back, we're going to start to introduce a new color. Okay, so we're going to let go of the orange and the yellow and the red, and we're going to start to pick up some new colors. So I'm picking up my uh, PC992. This is the light aqua. I really love this color. And lately I've been playing with this color with the parrot green, which has got kind of a tealish feel to it, which is PC1006. Now, if you don't have that teal green, you could use the grass green, and that will also give it kind of a nice blend. The grass green, I believe, is PC909. Yeah. And that also, you can see, has kind of a foresty green, and when you mix it with that light aqua, it'll go teal, which is kind of nice. So let's go ahead and take that light aqua and bring it into the center of our piece here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to work on the side of the pencil. You'll notice that my pencil is all sharpened up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the pencil with my thumb and my index finger and I'm going to rub the side of the pencil into the page. And this is going to help me to have a little bit of control over it, but it's also going to give me the ability to fill space much more easily than if I was just using the top of the pencil. So you can see that I'm just working around the butterfly here and I'm being mindful not to do too much over the top of it. And I'm just doing little circles to just lay down a foundation of that light blue. Now once I've got that blue in there, I'm just making sure there's no white poking through here. I'm going to pick up that darker green. So this is this is that parrot green that I was just talking about here. And I'm going to start to bring a shadow into the piece here. So you can see there's just this really nice shadow that's going to come in. I'm going to turn the tile, make it work for my hand here. I'm just working my way around the piece. You can see that I'm being really mindful to get right around those darkened edges. And now I'm going to pick up that light aqua again. And I'm going to start to blur out that line of demarcation. And you'll see that I'll kind of dust back in a little bit and then blur that line out. What I'm really trying to do is create that shadow-like feel. And then if you would like, you can pick up some of that white and really soften it up. Make sure that your white doesn't have any other colors on it because that can drag the colors into the piece and you might get a little bit of mud in there. You'll lose the vibrancy of the color that you have.
and you can see how that really brings a nice halo around the butterfly and brings a little bit of depth around the edges. And if you want to come back in and redefine that line towards the edge, you can. Just to give it a little bit of drama. So go ahead and play with that, and then when we come back, we're going to start to carry that color outward. Isn't that so pretty? Even if we left it just like that, it would be really fun. All right, so let's take these two colors and start to bring them into well here. And we're going to get a really nice contrast off of this. So I'm just going to come in and start to bring in well. And you can see that I'm just going to dust in that light aqua first. Getting right in there. And this is really going to pop once we get it going. Now I'm going to come in with that green that we were talking about before, and we're going to start to make that really nice shadow right behind each of the well lines. So you're going to see me always staying to the left of those lines. So that when I turn, you can see that I'm staying to the left. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Turning again, staying to the left of the line. And one more time. Now I'll be coming in and just adding a little bit of drama right behind the well line, just giving it a little bit of emphasis. So I'm pressing a little bit harder here. And then I'll come back in with that light blue and blur it out a little bit. And then I'll pick up my white and really soften it up. Now you want to be careful with the white that you don't pull that green too far forward. You want to make sure that you're leaving enough light up at the tip of each well. You can come back in and just blur those out just a little bit, but be careful not to pull it up to the lighter part. And you can see here, look at the dimension that we got off of that. Isn't that so pretty? It really gives this a real pop. So go ahead and have some fun with that. And then when we come back, we're going to start to bring a little bit more of that blue outward. It just pops, doesn't it? That's so fun. So we're going to take that peacock blue or the peacock green that we have here. And we're going to start to bring it into the envelope flower here. And I want to just show you what I'm going to do with it. So I've got my light aqua, which I'm going to put in right in here. And you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of light right in that edge. I'm going to come in with the dark green and just give that a little bit of a pop. Now I'm going to do that on each of these. It's almost like a little teacup that we're doing here. and then I'll come in over here as well. All of this letting the eye travel outward just to give it a little bit of balance. It's taking something that was really, really busy before and giving it a lot of gravity. So you can see that I've got those in there and then I'll just lightly blur them in with a little bit of the white. You wanna be mindful that you don't lose the white that you have in there and that really gives it a really neat pop. So go ahead and take those and bring those into the envelope flowers. Okay, so this is about to change 
big time. So if you want to take a picture of your piece right before this uh, next part, it's a good time to do it. So I'm going to switch out the colors here, and I've got two colors in my hand that I'm really partial to. This is magenta, which is PC930, and then I also have violet in my hand, which is PC932. And these two play really well together. So we're going to focus in on the area where we have the envelope flower here. And this is going to create a lot of contrast, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to just pop right off the page here. And I almost want this to feel like a watercolor. So you can see that my magenta is already uh, nice and sharpened up here. So we're going to work on the side of the pencil again, just like we did. Notice how far back on the pencil I'm holding. And I'm just going to start to dust in to these areas right here. So I'm just turning and getting right in there. And I'll turn again. Turning in over here. Now once I have that dusted in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up the violet. And I'm going to start to bring in that violet and create a shadow around that star that we've created in the center. Now you can see that I'm still going really, really lightly with that violet. I'm not looking to create a heavy shadow just yet. So I'm just going around and creating just a light shadow first. Just to make this interesting. And then once I have that, now you're going to see me start to push a little bit harder with that violet. And I love the contrast of the violet next to the orange and the green. It just really has a nice transition to it. And it brings a lot of energy into the piece. Now I'm also going to bring in a little bit of shadow right into where the stems are. So right around the stems in here. And then I'll come back in with a little bit of that magenta and start to blur it out a little bit. So you can see that we're going to get a really, really rich color in here. And I'm going to lighten up my touch as I move away from the star. You can see that it's kind of fading out. I'm going to pick up my white. Now you want to make sure that the white doesn't have any blue on it from the last time you used it. And I'm going to start to do some blending in here. So you can see what this is going to do to those colors when they come together. Is that gorgeous or what? It just changes everything. Look at how gorgeous that is. This side compared to this side just by using the white. So I'm going to turn, come in here, and just look at that. Isn't that just so dramatic and gorgeous? That white pencil is just such an amazing blender and really you can do so much with it.
So you're going to see me now start to dive in between where the stems are and start to pull that color just by doing little circles. Look at how that's starting to change just with a little bit of the white. Isn't that lovely? Just so dramatic. And then a little bit just above the flower itself to get in there. And that has such a beautiful watercolor feel to it, doesn't it? So that when I zoom out, whoa, that is so beautiful. All right, we'll go ahead, have some fun with that. And I'm going to go around and do mine just like that. Take your time with these. You know, if you're doing the video here and you just want to do one section and then, you know, come back a little later and do another section, this is really nice shadow work to be doing and have a cup of tea and a little piece of chocolate and, and just take a little, a little bit of this and do it. You don't have to do it all at once if you don't want to. All right? Have fun. Isn't that so fun? It's got a glow to it, doesn't it? So we're going to take that same combination of the magenta and the purple and we're going to start to bring it into where these tipple are on the inside. So let's go ahead and zoom in on these. And I'm going to just go across the piece and leave a little light source on one side. And then I'll pick up that violet and give it a little bit of a push in there. And then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of the magenta and blur it out. Now I am going to pick up my white pencil and it's going to give this a really nice softening. So you're going to see me come in and soften it up and that really gives it a pretty pop. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go all the way around and do mine and then when we come back we're going to change our color. So we're going to let go of the purples here and we're going to pick up a green and this green that I'm working with is the lime peel green and this is PC1005. This is the lime peel green. I really love this color because it has a really earthy tone to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color and start to work in the stems. Now if you don't have the lime peel green you could always use true green which is a really pretty one which is PC91 zero or you could use your grass green in lieu of those and that's PC 909 so lots of different colors that you can use this I'm just partial to that lime peel green so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start to dust down the flower stems that I have in here and you'll notice that I'm gonna leave a little white and towards the center now I'm not going to leave Leave them that way for long. The next color that we're going to be picking up is going to also come into these stems. So for just right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dust down very lightly the top of the stem and the bottom of the stem and work my way around the piece. You go ahead and do yours. I'll finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to introduce gray into this piece. So I'm going to pick up my Zentangle graphite pencil. You can use just a regular graphite pencil if that's what you've got. And then I'm also going to use a blending stump. They are called tortillons or uh, cardboard blending stumps, whichever one you want to call it. And uh, you can pick these up for really cheap at any kind of art supply store. If you don't have one of these, you can always use a Q-tip. Q-tips are great for uh, working as a blender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to our flowers here in the corner and I'm going to start to dust into 
my petals here. And you can see that I'm just doing a little bit of the graphite. And normally I don't like to work in graphite, but lately I've been in, enjoying it if I do it uh, towards the end of the piece. And so you can see now I'm just taking that blender stump and just lightly giving it a blend out. And then I'm going to come back in and give it a little bit more intensity in the top and just blend that out as well. And you can see that that gives us a really pretty Art Deco feel, which is quite nice. Now I'm also going to come in right where that green was, and I'm just going to do a dusting at the top and the bottom, and the blender really will go right over the green. So you can see that I'm just going right into where the green is and lightly dusting. So I'm going to come into these side pieces here and dust those. And then I'll do the same thing over here. You want to be mindful where you put your hand. Graphite does have a tendency to move, um, but it is so soft in these little pieces. And normally I would be doing this with my Prisma color pencil, but as of lately I've been really enjoying the graphite. So you can see that that gives us a really unique feel so that when I zoom out, look at the difference between this and this. It really has nice dimension to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to work on mine and then when we come back we're going to do some shading around the butterfly and we're also going to do some wallpaper. Loving this. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of gray around the centerpiece here. You're going to see me come in and just add a little bit of a shadow right along the edge of the star, the internal star here. And you can see that I'm just kind of playing around with that and just letting it kind of dust along the edge. I'm not being overly cautious with it. I'm just getting in there and letting it kind of lay in there. Once I have that, I'm going to pick up my blender and you're going to see me just start to soften it out. You want to be mindful not to lose your light. So, you know, if you're going over it and you lose your light, you can always come back in with a eraser and bring back in the light, but best to have good practice from the get-go. So you can see that that has a really nice uh, depth to it. It gets it, it, it's almost a little moody, which I like. So you can see that I'm just bringing that around and so when it comes back to center it just gives it a glow of interest which I really like. Now if you have any spots that you feel like you need to come back to you can absolutely do that. So go ahead and do those and then when we come back we're going to add in a little bit of wallpaper. So we're going to do a little bit of wallpaper inside of this piece here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the color that we used inside to do the shadow. That is the parrot green, which is the PC1006. And we're going to start to make little spirals in the background and we're going to tangle with the color that we colored with. And so what I'm going to do is I've got this nice and sharp here and I'm just going to start to make these spiral like shapes in the background and these are going to really give a little bit of interest to the background in the center and not let it be so flat. And I love to do wallpaper in a lot of my color work just because it brings texture to the background. The background can sometimes be a little bit flat and I just love what wallpaper can do for it. So you can see that I'm starting to work my way around and you know when you're doing spirals you really want to take your time. Spirals will give you away if you're rushing. 
and you can see that that brings such an interesting feel. It's almost like a glow that happens. It almost looks like he's hovering over water, which is really lovely. Now I want to take that same idea and start to bring it up into this area, but I'm feeling like the color is just a little bit flat in here. So I'm going to pick back up that yellow and I want it to feel a little bit more watercolory. So I'm going to come in and just start to add little random places where that yellow is going to kind of poke through and you can see that that just brings an element of interest. It almost makes it look like a sunset. And so I'll go around and I'll add a little bit of that yellow into some of those places just to make it a little bit interesting. You can see as I turn I'm just doing a little bit here and there and I'm going fairly lightly and this is just creating a little bit of interest in that background so that it's not so flat. Now I'll pick back up a little bit of that magenta that I was working with before because that is the dominant color in the piece and I'm going to sharpen it up and you want to make sure that it's not too sharp that the point's going to break and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do printemps again. I'm really taking my time with this. And what I like to do with printemps is I like to do a few large ones and then I can start to squeeze in some smaller ones and that I think makes it look really interesting. You can see I'm really taking my time there. Look at how cool that's starting to look. Isn't that beautiful? So I'll do a few large ones at first and do another big one up here. Remember, the slower you go, the more beautiful they'll be. If you're rushing through Pronton, it really does give you away. Come up here. Look at how beautiful that is. Just love it. So I'm just going to continue to work in this fashion where I bring these in a couple of large ones first and then you can squeeze the other ones in there and that just makes it more interesting looking. Coming in over here. Maybe one in here. And I'll play over in this corner as well. And you really do want to play. You know, this is this is fun. This is just letting your inner kid out to to do what we do best. So you can see that when I zoom out, look at the difference between this corner and this corner. Okay? So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Isn't that so fun? <laughs> I just love it. It just brings so much energy into the piece. It almost vibrates, you know. It's just so fun. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of highlighting into this piece. I've got the Mizu Love pen in my hand, but you could use the Signo Uniball, you can use the Sakura White, you can use a Posca pen for this, whatever works for you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the hearts and I'm going to give them a little bit of a highlight. So you can see that I'm just coming in and I'm going very, very lightly over this and adding a couple of dots. So just a little line and a couple of dots will give this just a little bit of, I don't know, that, that just shine factor that I love so much. So you're going to see me go all the way around and do that. 
And if you want to go into your heart and add a little bit of emphasis on the uh, the spiral, I'll show you a nice way to do that. The other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to come in right to where the tipple is and add just a little dot in the darkest part of tipple. So you can see that that's bringing in a little bit of interest, which I really like. It gives a little spark in the center for sure. Okay. And then if your butterfly needs a little bit of white in the wings, you can come back in and really re-emphasize the white in the wings. But what I was talking about within the heart here, I'm going to pick back up my Micron P and pen, and I'm going to just zoom in on one of these hearts here. And what you can do is you can come in and just give a little bit of weight to the heart. Um, the, the spiral in the heart. And you can see how that just kind of plays up on that spiral and gives it a little bit more emphasis, which I think is really nice. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my chop on this. I'm really loving this one. A little bit different than the first time that I did this. So I'm just going to come down here and put my chop right in the corner. This is your initial that just lets you know that you've finished the class and you kind of feel like you're ready to let go, as it were. Now, I do want to talk about these other pieces in here because I want you to look at these pretty carefully, especially these two together. So all I did was reversed my colors. So the purple that I had in here and in here I used as my background and then I switched and put the blue in the center. Now in this one I added a little bit of gold in the star and I thought that that was really cool and fun to play with. And then in this one I did just a very similar version of this but added in a little bit more yellow into the background with the blues and did a little bit more interesting stuff with the um, the envelope flower. So always coming back and trying new things is kind of my my thing that I like to do. I like to play and have a good time with a piece. So hopefully you enjoyed this class. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. That's always helpful. And then one more thing before I go here is that we've released a new video on the Tangled Yogi website. So you can go to tangledyogi.com and check out this really fun class that I'm doing to raise money for the earthquake victims in Turkey and in Syria. So if you go to tangledyogi.com and go to the, vid the video page, it will be there. It's the first one and this is called the Phoenix Star. You can give as little as $5 or as much as you want to help the victims and all of the money will go to World Central Kitchen, which is on the ground in Turkey and Syria, and they are feeding the victims of the earthquake. All right, so that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. Thank you so much for joining us for this really fun class today. I, I really love Follow Your Heart, so I hope that you do, and I can't wait to see your work. Bye for now.